All right, it's 9.30. Uh, this is a special call workshop. I'll define that in a minute so everyone understands. But please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Vock, do you want to call the roll, please? Mr. Roll? Yeah. Ms. Graves? Here. Mrs. Turner? Here. Mr. Kramer? Here. Mayor Winger? Here. Uh, as I said a minute ago, this is a special call workshop, and for the public to understand that, we will not vote on things today. This is really a chance for, because of the Sunshine Law, for the five members of the City Council and the City Manager and the City Attorney uh, to talk in open. As such, um, so you understand, we will take the items for discussion at, 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 on the order that they're on here, which is probably pure random, and we'll take public comment about any subject after that particular matter. At the end, before adjournment, if there's further topics that you want to raise, then you may bring them up at that point. Um, so you understand, under the Sunshine Law, you know, we don't really have the opportunity to talk one another about our philosophy about things. So this will be more philosophical. Also, uh, you know, the one time we typically do that during the year is at the budget meeting in July. But Mr. Old has suggested this so that we'll be sure we're on the, on, on the same uh, page. And I think, that's, I think that's useful. Does any other member of City Council have any comment or... Uh, Mr. Mayor, I was wondering if um, originally F and G were on our previous agenda when we had thought about doing this, and I was wondering if we could move F and G up in the front because I know quite a few people came to talk about the vision plan and long-range planning. If that is acceptable, if not, then we can stick to this agenda. It, it matters not to me. It's the sense of the City Council. I think Go it's for it. fine. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Well, then I guess... Uh, Amelia, you have the floor since you put the discussion of the vision plan on, and you can run the session on that. Then. <laughs> you asked for it, you have it. <laughs> I wanted us to talk about the vision plan because this was something that was a long time, a long process. A lot of people came together on it, and I don't know necessarily that we're using it in the best way possible. I think we could start measuring what we accomplish in a year against the vision plan. How far have we come? How far do we still need to go? Just different aspects of the different neighborhoods and things like that. And we use monetary ways to judge how we're doing. But I think just dollars and cents is a little myopic as far as the big picture goes in kind of seeing where we are. And I think it would give us a good way to kind of judge how we're doing. I've heard that I've heard a lot of frustration about uh, we that we spent a lot of time on the vision plan and worked on it and and basically reached agreement on it and then have not used it and I think that that's a great idea. Yeah. I believe Tim might be with us and he might want to come up and sort of catch us up to date where we are on the vision plan. One of the things that I've had in my experience, relatively short experience on the vision plan, there were several interpretations of what the vision plan came out and said, for example, the vision plan on the beach, there's still interpretations of what uh, what were really the directives in, in that effort. But Tim's back there. He just, he just walked in. Tim, you want to come up and sort of give us an update as to where we are in the vision plan and as they particularly apply to various neighborhoods? You want to join us at the table? Oh, yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> There's water here, cool. <laughs> I was waiting on a little something. Uh, stronger. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll give you an update. We've been implementing various parts of the vision plan over the last uh, 10 years. Uh, the problem, the vision plan is so broad, and it requires so many resources and all that, we really haven't been able to tackle everything. And then there are other problems. When you get into... Uh, doing the specifics in the vision plan, you find there a lot of the, the agreement that was there on a broad basis is kind of lacking. And I can tell you the, the long battle we had going through doing the overlay district down in the uh, beach district is a good example of that. Even doing the historic preservation ordinance was difficult. Mm -hmm. That almost got mired, and we, we had to take out some of the uh, more stronger points of that that we could have done, historic preservation. 
But for uh, getting down to your asking about the neighborhoods, we've been working with uh, uh, original town, you're all aware, because we pass a, a, uh, a plan amendment for that. And we incorporated various elements from the vision plan. We're going to do that. We, haven't, we were going to work on Osceola Park, but we are so short staffed right now, I have to do a major comp plan amendment or update to the comp plan. And what we want to do is incorporate the vision plan into that, which probably should have been done one of the first things back there. We don't, the, uh, for all of you to a little understand, the comp plan is the policy document that drives where we want to go. And in many ways, it's a much better vehicle than reacting on a piecemeal basis to uh, items that come up. A lot of the dialogue can be done in a more favorable light. I mean, you get into, when you get down to regulations, then you get down to some really nasty meetings. <laughs> but if you can uh, reach some consensus before you get to that, and the, and the comp plan is intended to do that, and it does drive everything. So our intent now is to work closely on the comp plan, trying to finish it if we can. As I said, I'm very shorthanded, and uh, development is picked up uh, markedly. Uh, but we really feel that there are a lot of elements in, that can be incorporated to protect some of our older neighborhoods and help them. And I think uh, I brought up one of the things, I think one of the major things is providing incentives with design control in these neighborhoods. We're not getting a lot of investment in there. So throwing on a lot of regulations on top of that is not necessarily going to bring in what we want to see and protect those neighborhoods. So we're working on that. And it's just that uh, it, it takes some time to do. But that's where we're at now. So it isn't we haven't done a lot of things in the division plan. I mean, we did things uh, uh, not only in the the, uh, the beach overlay district, we did that, the commercial plan, but we also implemented things like the historic preservation. We are now a certified local government. We also put limits on the height of single family buildings. Uh, we do a lot of site plan review for all buildings. So a lot of the recommendations have been done. Just the very detailed ones that involve neighborhoods has not been done. And one of the things that came up in those neighborhoods, and we get into arguments about that, is that uh, the, the vision plan calls for clearly that you have to have a majority or a not a super majority, but more than just majority of stakeholders, property owners. And there's where the rub comes in. So you have to be careful when you go through this. So I hope that answered your question in a long, drawn-out way. <laughs> what, what about trying to measure, Tim? I think that's where Amelia was coming from. Measure results and maybe do a, a, I guess a, a white paper or something on just, that. Just something so that at the, year, at the year end, at our fiscal year, we can say, look, we've, we've incorporated this and this. We're moving towards creating what we set out to create well, even if it's not you know well no i could we us. could we could put you a written report at the end of the year but i'm not saying that i'm addressing every one of those things right i mean right now it's critical we do the comp plan right absolutely. we will be dead in the water if we don't do the comp plan so that's, I, that's my next question do we have a uh, mandated time that we have to submit a revised comp plan yes february of next year that's, thank you. and that's what's got me very concerned so I am, but as I said, I don't want. To, I think there are a lot of good things in the in the in the um, um, a vision plan that we could incorporate in there. In fact, we've done some more fine tuning of that. If you ever look at our evaluation appraisal report, which we did several years ago, we got into some analysis of all that. So, what what uh, about? I, I don't understand the process. I I would think if you if you're doing a vision plan, then. Um, then that gets into the comp plan and then gets into some kind of long range plan that the city has or how well that's no you you brought up a good point a vision plan a lot of in fact the growth management act for they uh, pretty well stripped of anything is uh, re had an element in there that you do a vision plan and that's all that's a that's a, a facilitation bring in this participation get the stakeholders together to look at the future and a lot of and other communities have taken that and then they incorporate taking that into their comp plan, which is your long range. When you look at long range plan, that's what your comp plan does. You're going to look at at least for the next 20 years, mostly in like capital facilities and all that, there for got to be around 10 years at least. So you look at the, a lot of the things that we're looking at in the city, whether it's the waterfront, the inner and the lagoon, that all supposed to come together in the comp plan. It is that document supposed to do it. Our problem is if you read our comp plan, it was in 92, and even then I didn't think it was very, it wasn't a very strong comp plan. And it's not, a, 
atypical. Most uh, small localities, the state wasn't really hard on. It was where they hit was the counties. That's why the county has a very good comp plan, if you look at it. it is, uh, and we can use that to do a lot of our work. So uh, it, it, uh, I think we've been under pressure for the last number of years. Ever since the hurricanes, basically, we've been under mm -hmm. financial pressure here. And, and so to carry out some of these things has been not really very viable in some ways. So so maybe now that, that things have sort of smoothed out and we're go going on a different path, it looks like, that the idea of doing vision plan, comp plan, and some kind of long-range plan so we can see whether we can finance or build some of these things that are in the comp plan um, would be a wise thing to do. And I think that's what we'll incorporate as we do the comprehensive planning process best we could. That Those are the ideas that would come into that. I don't think we need to reinvent a vision plan. I think we need to move forward with the comp plan, incorporate was because there's a lot of those elements in the in the vision plan are they're they're promoting the walkable sustainable communities now some people may not like those terms but basically that's good urban planning uh and that's you know that's for our downtown a lot of our neighborhoods to protect them and so maybe moving talk at any time there's no maybe moving with the um with the comp plan then as a way to measure yes I, the comp measure. plan should put a good comp plan should have specific uh, numerical objectives in it. Our comp plan doesn't have it right now, but we will work to do that. Uh, I'm not trying to promise the world here. I've got, I got three planners. Do you, have resell do you have resources to do this? Not Probably not to do it in this year, just because we have so much that's coming in. And, and our, our first priority is to take care of development applications. Can I offer mm -hmm. a suggestion? Have you reached out to the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council? Uh, I have not reached out. We did on some element uh, on when we were doing some of the neighborhood plans, and the cost for their assistance was so much. But I don't mind seeing if they'd be willing to give us some technical assistance. I, I don't have a problem. Just another resource to, right. to try to supplement to, to get through this crunch time. And that's right. Let, let's see if we can get there. I mean, I um, I think in some ways that'll work. I mean, I even got my wife chipping in, who's a professional, to do the editing. Well, that tells you where we've gotten down. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, we come across so many things in the meetings where it's like we're just managing this or managing that. And to kind of have a direction and an objective where we know we should be trying to reach each year some goals to set to, to get to a certain point, I think, would help just the city and the council know, know where to go I, I, and know I, what to prioritize. I totally agree. I mean, there are a lot of things I'd like to happen. I'm trying to, to balance what I have and right. been given and work with you. Are there all. some short-term sources of people to help with this sort of, I mean, consultants or something that could come in or, or I, don't, I don't know. It, it all equals money. Yeah. Right. And, and the fact of the matter is, is that we do not have anything in the budget. Uh, as you recall, well, you weren't here, Randy, but there was reduction in the planning staff. Now, at that time, it was probably justified in the fact that uh, development was off and review was not required. Now what we have is an uptick in that, which is taking man hours uh, to do it. But it really does not increase revenues substantially in order to justify right. payment. So you, you're in that, you know, it's sort of like the uh, comprehensive plan doesn't have any financial rewards to it. It just has community rewards. Randy, so I think it's up to us, us to say what we want done and then, Jim, to budget it for next year. Uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. When was the last comp plan, Tim? Uh, 92. And when was the last, when was the vision plan done? 10. Uh, 2005. And for the general public, what the <clears throat> vision plan does, and I agree with Tim, it's a, it's a good document. What it talks about is taking Vero Beach into the future, honoring the past, and it being walkable, uh, the terms you used a minute ago. Uh, the over the uh, summary statement is really quite a beautiful statement. And, and so under the vision plan, we want to look like Vero Beach has traditionally looked as we make progress into the future, uh, adding buildings and having them look like Vero Beach, that sort of thing. So, uh, Randy, back to my earlier comment, I think it's up to us at this session to set direction. I mean, and if, if, if we need to do more of this, then we tell Jim. Now, I don't know where we're going to get the money from, but we have to give him the priorities. Mr. Mayor, just to expand upon that, as you know, we've had workshops in the past where you all have given me direction as to how to assemble the budget. 
I was sort of hoping at the end of this workshop that same type of general discussion would come out as well as to what your expectations are. And as you know, historically speaking, we've had expectations of reduction of the man hours, uh, reduction, make sure we don't go up on property taxes, uh, reducing, as a matter of fact, in one year we didn't even go to the rollback rate. So those type of directions is what, or what I will need in order to put the budget forward. If you just say, this is what we want, go cre create a budget, then you need to expect that there'll be needed resources in order to uh, attain those goals. So that's about where we are in the process. I, I'd like to put one asterisk in this, and it's, it's possible that uh, someone from the public wants to talk about it, but you know, we have the concept of the art village, which at least I think sounds like it makes sense. I don't, is there anybody that wants to talk about the visioning process, which would include districts? Yes, Barbara, you may come forward. Mr. Mayor, also to let you know, we have been working with the Cultural Council on this project, and I think Tim and I both signed off that this is a, an extremely good concept and a great idea, and it's an expansion of our redevelopment of 14th Avenue and what's taking place there. Thank you very much for allowing me to come before you. I'm Barbara Hoffman. I'm the Executive Director of the Cultural Council of Indian River County and the Chairman of the Cultural Arts Village Leadership Team. Thank you for this opportunity to present to you our vision for a cultural arts village and how we hope to achieve it. The concept, local community people with ideas, energy, and commitment are working together on a plan to revitalize downtown Vero Beach by preserving and retrofitting the original traditional neighborhood concept to create a Vero Beach cultural arts village in downtown district. The Cultural Council of Indian River County and Main Street Vero Beach have, been, have begun working together to develop a concept for a Vero Beach cultural arts village in, downtown, in the downtown district that would include part of the Edgewood neighborhood just south of State Road 60. Over the next several months, we plan to work with our neighborhood residents and owners and other local groups on a vision for the Cultural Arts Village, whose objective will be to create an environment attractive to residents, visitors, and creative professionals of all types, including visual, performing, culinary, building, recording graphics, artists, and artisans. A further objective will be to bring to the Business Improvement District related support services such as printing, marketing, health, entertainment, business, retail, grocery, all that is needed to support a successful artistic and cultural careers while maintaining aesthetically pleasant living and working places. This mixed use village concept will allow people to live, to work, to sell and play in home studios nearby to local businesses and serve as an anchor to downtown district revitalization. Between 14th and 20th Avenues, the Edgewood neighborhood features both streets with sidewalks and alleys. The business district between State Road 60 East and West from 14th to 20th Avenue will offer complementary creative environments, one for living, working, selling, the other for cafes, restaurants, and businesses. The proposed use will reflect principles of retrofitting rather than redevelopment by maintaining a view to preserving structures, street layouts, and motifs that are important parts of this area's heritage and sense of place. We envision an inviting shaded streetscape that supports walking, biking, street activities, and a diversity of complementary economic events and activities. Small businesses, arts, health and wellness, restaurants and related events. Such events would be tailored to attract residents and visitors of all ages, families, children, teens, young adults, professionals, and retirees. The plan will address the need for suitable public transportation to and from daily activities. Policies, regulations, and incentives must be harmonized to encourage and attract these events and activities so they may be sustained by the community. Going forward, the challenge is to beautify and update our downtown, to calm traffic on Route 60, to make the neighborhood bicycle and pedestrian friendly, to deal with overhead power lines and sign clutter, to improve wayfinding signage and traffic circulation, and to implement zoning and design review 
reviews to support more residential and mixed use retrofitting. We request the opportunity to provide additional input to future changes in the city's comprehensive plan to accommodate the emerging village concept. The process will involve a planning effort with a qualified urban planning resources, perhaps a design charrette run by local architects that includes local residents, city staff, and cultural groups to determine what is needed to make this idea practicable and attractive to residents, owner artists, and business development. This could include tax or building incentives to promote reasonable rents for studios and businesses, more gathering places, incentives for home building, restoration, and renovation. We would like to discourage chain stores and restaurant chains, depending on the outcomes we may come up with some useful guidelines for the city's architectural review commission to promote in the, in the Vero Beach Cultural Arts Village. We intend to work with local residents, city staff, and commissions, professional urban planners and architects, local cultural groups and art galleries, the state college and high schools to determine what is needed and what will work to create the best vision for a Vero Beach cultural arts village in the downtown area. There are several members of the leadership committee for the Cultural Arts Village in the audience today, and um, I'm sure that any one of us would be happy to answer any questions you have or provide any further information. Thank you very much again for allowing us to come before you. Go ahead, Mrs. Turner. I did have a question um, as to how this is meshing with this economic, historical, or Vero Beach downtown this economic. Yes. You know, that it, I to think make sure that we are. We're all working together and not a different... We are all working together, yes. Very definitely we are working together, and we do feel that what we are proposing is within the vision plan. Oh. I, just, just a point of information. It had been brought up, and this concept has been discussed with the Economic uh, Committee that are doing this, and they're tying a lot of their concepts into this promotion. The revitalization of the art district on the south end of 14th Avenue has sort of sparked a lot of creativity Cultural Council being part of that. And the, the great thing about this project, it really is more of a zoning issue than it is a, a major investment in dollars. And because we'll be trying to encourage private investment in the area by giving more flexibility to use of land, but at the same time to, as the vision plan says, regard the integrity of the community and the neighborhood. And Barbara and the Cultural Council picked a very good neighborhood because, architecturally speaking, there are some very nice buildings in there that are almost in transition, going from owner-occupied to renters. And, and if we can capture some of that at this particular stage, number one, it makes it affordable to investors, and number two, it gives its right for that reinvestment in, in doing the work. You know, I think the way this meeting should work is we should reach a consensus on the art village. But before we do that, I mean, on the Art Village itself, is there any counterpose? I mean, if you support what Barbara says, you probably don't need to come up again. But if you do not support it, you probably do. All right, seeing none, uh, my general feeling is that, it's, that it, it fits the vision plan and it is something that uh, we should support if there's general consensus for it. I agree. Yep. It would be a great asset. Yep, absolutely. Well, I'm, uh, wow. personally, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that uh, we've got somebody like Barbara that is, that's going to follow through with this. This is an area that's needed uh, some help, and uh, I'm glad somebody's taken it under their wing and, and going to run with it. So hopefully uh, as much success we can uh, help you with, we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll do. Thank you very much. This is going to be a wonderful community project. There are a lot of partners in this, and uh, we're really looking forward to moving ahead, and we thank you so much for this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we can come back to a minute in the, uh, Mr. Uh, Amelia or, and Randy back to uh, what we would have the city manager do, but is there any more comment about the vision plan before we move on? I, I, I kind of wonder about some other, the, the new things that would go into it. I mean, it, does this hook into it somehow? So not so you rewrite it, but um, uh, and there I think there are other probably some other issues. I mean, you're going to you're going to talk about a home for for two programs that are really doing well now, uh, the rowing and the sailing programs. And and do you what 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 should we do? Should we? 
take time out to not to redo the vision plan, but I mean, do we add them in somehow, or or what what happens with that? Well, no. I, as I was <clears throat> pointing out, I guess I didn't get across. We've it, we've got the comp plan. That'll be your policy. That's going to okay. really take the place of your vision plan. And okay. certainly, what you're talking about the waterfront development is an issue that should be go go through that kind of yeah. process. Okay. Okay. We, we will be taking what you all say today and a consensus of what you're saying today, not necessarily a vote, and we will be building that into as we go forward administratively to, to carry out the goals and objectives of the council. And I think that's the important thing we're looking for. For example, this cultural council the thing, Tim and I had really signed on to that, but this is the first time I think you as a group have really been involved in the discussion, and Tim and I, at least on this project, will take that back as the incentive to make sure that we, we make this happen. So we'll be working in that, and that's sort of what each one of these topics, as you all go through that, we will be taking you back and trying to figure out how to make it happen uh, through the budgeting as well as policy. Process. So does does the comp plan uh, have numbers attached to it? Oh yes, it it is pretty. Uh, it'll have numbers. It has both existing. It'll have projected numbers. Uh, you know, populate all the socioeconomic numbers. It'll discuss the issues. So if you're talking about land use, what should we do? The waterfront. You would look at the various alternatives you have, and that would be your long range, you know, decision and whatever you all come up with. So it has prices. Yeah, it, you have to have, at least through the 10 years, you're going to have capital costs for some of it. Beyond that, you may not have that. But it, normally the first five years, and that's what one thing I'm trying to, <laughs> that I'll be coming back to you all, the city is not really incorporated. It's five-year capital budget. Really, that should also be incorporated in what they call a capital improvements element every year. We didn't do it this year because your five-year capital thing took care of that. But, but realistically in, in, a, in, a tech, in a practical sense, in an in effective sense, during your budget process, you also look at what you need to maintain your comp plan. And then you look yes. at those yeah. things. I mean, there are a lot of things you look at, and you look at those capital projects. And it all should meld together under the comp plan. Our comp plan really is a maintenance plan. If you look at it, what we've plugged in there is maintaining as close to status quo as we can do. So. The comprehensive plan, on the other hand, is where you start plugging in expenses and expansions of what we're presently doing. And that's the so-called rubber meets the road concept. I think the problem that we're going to have is having uh, planning and uh, having Tim's department have the resources right. to do it. Why don't you bring that up at the end? Uh, one of the two of you, you know, and I think that's the summary that has to happen. But Mr. Mayor, I think the whole thing is going to be summarized in that area. I mean, when you it, everything can't have the number one priority on here unless you're planning on major. Right, but expense. it seems that so much of what we're talking about, everything's kind of all roads lead to Rome. It's all going to this comp plan as far as the, the, what we're going to do. But when we start talking about waterfront development, and I just picked mm -hmm. that out, we can pick any one of these things out. You're right, it goes into the comprehensive plan, and by February, Tim will have hopefully this thing done, and we will have submitted to the state. Everybody will sign off, and life is really good. But if you expect to get something done in the next fiscal year or the next fiscal year or in the five-year capital plan, these are the projects that you will be saying that we want to put emphasis on and try to make happen. And I, and I, you know, the comprehensive plan is going to be good. It will have the projects in there, but making the priorities that next year we're going to do something, whatever it is, is when you really be making your your dollar investment. Yeah, you know, we have roughly a, a twenty point something, but a million budget, and every year that I've been here, you know, the the, the reality of the, the matter is, even if real estate values and everything else go up, we might have a couple hundred thousand or some such number. Uh, and we have more needs than that, be that as it may. But, but again, going back, I think, to what we were discussing, after you all get talking about the priorities that you want and some of your expectations, and then at the end we'll just say, you know, well, how do we prepare next year's budget in order to meet some of these expectations? So let's come back to that if that's acceptable. Is, uh, as far as the uh, vision plan, is there any more comment from the public or firm? And, Yes, come forward, uh, um, Olska. 
I know who you are. Um, my name's Olska Forbes, and I'm a resident in the city, and I have some property in the downtown area. Um, in 2005, I think it was, when we had the last big charrette that we spent like $26,000 on getting a vision plan from, was the last time that I'm aware that there was even a public meeting where the citizens came and saw what the vision plan was. Now, I know it's available on the Internet. And uh, that's all fine and dandy, but the faces have changed. We've got new people here. We have new investors. Uh, we have new businesses. And I'm particularly interested in the downtown area. And I know that we could maybe set up and help um, have another public meeting and have somebody that understands the present vision plan to present it and see what the feedback is. Um, there's new ideas, like the Cultural <coughs> Council's new idea, which I think is very good. Um, that, you know, we can at that time address it and go from there, because you do have new stakeholders. And we do have um, organizations that this could work on the beach with the ocean business people. Miracle Mile now has a group of people that are working together. So all of this would be things that we could do that wouldn't cost a lot. Um, we do have to have somebody present it, and we have to have a location to do it in that we don't pay for, which I think should be here. <laughs> sure. So what do you think? Mm -hmm. have, have, have you all seen the vision plan of 2005? <clears throat> I'm, I'm not as familiar as I'd like to be with it. It's, it's, it's a document that we spent a uh, day in the community center with, I can't remember, 75, 80 people, and we broke up into groups. And uh, out of the whole thing, eventually we got a complete um, document. I can't remember how. I mean, I wish I would have brought mine. It's about 80 pages. About 80 pages. Mm -hmm. Still, yeah, a lot of it talks in general terms as opposed to specific. And we can get I agree that. Things have evolved. You know, as this, have we been successful within the city? That many, yeah, many yeah. things. Yeah. But uh, you know, if we're going to go with the vision plan as being what we think is our ideas to present to uh, the planning and zoning to incorporate in the comp plan that they're going to present to you as the council to, to vote on, um, I think we, you have to get the the players back involved, all but, the people that are that it's going to affect. Well, um, Oska, I, I think what our staff has been thinking of that we would have indi we would have individual when we're doing the comp plan, we'd focus on various parts of the city that need that, and the downtown would be one. So we would bring that all up at or this how would meeting. You get the the, the stakeholders involved. Well, we'd uh, we'd invite the stakeholders involved. Certainly, I have um, never received a letter from the city of Vero beach since I've been a property owner in downtown of four parcels commercial. Never. Not one. Oh, okay. Uh, now, I have <laughs> one question for you. And I'm not trying to... I, I think it, it's good. I'm real happy to see this many people here. I don't know what issues they're here for. I don't think it's for downtown. <laughs> but I think it would be good to give each segment an opportunity to... Um, uh, strategize and talk out what they think and then of course some of it's not going to be um, able to be used but we could move it forward again. well that's good we've had several meetings how you know many people are we well, missing in, in the planning and zoning since well I can't say that I mean uh, you know uh, right well the the city has never done a comp plan on its own I mean the last comp plan was done with consultants okay plus yeah we're down to three professional Planners, including but myself. We had two. Uh, we, had we had we had two. we had at least five, uh, up to six when I when I first got here. So, I mean, we're down to that. But we went through the recession, as Mr. Right. O'Connor pointed out. You know, reducing staff was you know certainly it was being done. Now we're picking up time, and we. Well, uh, I think there's enough people uh, that would be willing to work on that. Uh, okay. If somebody wants to like uh, 
specifically um, oh, oh school. To, we uh, we have had we have had neighborhood meetings that Tim's had the uh, planning and zoning commission have held those meetings and had them right here in this building as well as going to the neighborhoods and when they have met uh, on several occasions, it's been a very good crowd. For example, in Osceola neighborhood was I'm the latest. I'm aware of that one. Yeah, and there was a very good crowd that turned out. And and this is just from my experience. You almost need to take each area sort of independent. Otherwise, you sort of get lost in the confusion of what the discussions no, no, are. You might be right there because I remember when you had the one and it was uh, televised where. Um, it's the other side of 60, where the Christian Scientist churches and the community church, all that area, there was one there. And then I remember recently, mm -hmm. um, Vicki's neighborhood was done. Yeah. And I but think I'm we want to be careful. asking about the downtown commercial yeah. area in conjunction <clears throat> with the area that Barbara's talking about, that they want to move the cultural. Well, I think that can all be integrated as a whole. It's all linked together on that. Because those are all more like business-oriented type properties. Right. Even the even the small. But you uh, know, art live there, sell your art. But I think they're all tied together. I mean, we all understand. One of the things we've done is we got we did that twin pair study. You know, that was called for. Now the the big thing is getting the money together or waiting for the state to be you know to do that which needs to be done to make the downtown work. We need to look at bringing more uh, transit or permanent residential downtown. You've got to get more people living down there to make this really work and make it a great downtown. So I think that all works together, and we don't want to we want to make sure that we got a whole together. So we bring the arts village in and look at the downtown. I think we all agree. So we we're going to have some meetings as we go through this. I'm not. The other thing, remember, we're going to do the best we can, but meetings require resources, meeting staff to put the meetings together to do all that. So we're going to do the best we can with what we have and our, our resources. It's Well, maybe uh, some of that um, secretarial work, you could get some people to come in and help you. Oh, well, they're... that's <laughs> yeah, that's true. There, some of that we could. Thank you, Mrs. All right. Well, all right. Uh, you know, uh, uh, th this comment, yeah, uh, David, wait a minute, Th this, and then come forward, though. Uh, this, this comment about the vision plan, the vision plan is almost kind of like our 2005 Constitution, it's like the Constitution of the United States, in other words, we go back to it all the time. And it's, it's involved, but its general philosophy is to keep Vero Vero, in other words, to move forward along the path we have, but seek progress on that path. And I would hate to open that again. I think the right forum is the one that the city manager and, and Mr. McGarity are talking about as we do the comprehensive plan. So I would invite people, anyone who doesn't understand the vision plan, it's online. I, and I, I think we'd be <coughs> ill-advised going back to what's in it because it it's pretty good, you know. And, and, and it, any deviation can be handled in the comprehensive plan at that point. Uh, Mr. Hunter, would you like to come forward, please? And I think you, you don't want to, to endanger this uh, this movement, and you don't want to slow it down or stop it. Right. You want to you want to move forward, and and we want to make sure that we don't get in a in an argument about Not, it. Yeah, um, I just uh, David Hunter. Um, I just wanted to uh, make a quick comment. I don't know much about the vision plan. I do know that Vero is a beautiful city and that the efforts of you and previous uh, city council uh, have and city managers and employees have managed to make this a wonderful place to live and we're all trying to work to keep it that way and I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, Mr. McGarry's comment about staff shortages, uh, I'm hearing that uh, a lot and I am uh, very sympathetic to the concerns. Uh, what I heard, of course, is that there are a lot of developers now that the recession is over coming in and asking for their plans to be reviewed, and that takes up a lot of staff time. Uh, what occurs to me, and therefore he doesn't have the resources to do uh, the comp plan uh, at an uh, advanced speed, what I think uh, ought to be considered, and something I'm sure Mr. McGarry wouldn't want to raise, is charging the developers more for their reviews in order to make this a, a user fee funded operation. Lots of parts of government operate that way. And there's nothing irrational about expecting a developer who's coming in with a big plan that requires uh, days or weeks 
to uh, to be considered to pay more so that the uh, the cost is not borne by the citizens but by the person who's putting forth the, the financial plan to make money so that's uh, that's my suggestion on that well, oh well thanks david uh, but our state law we we cover our costs and the, and fully cover the cost of that so the thing is, you're not always working on an application, so you have some overhead and all that. But we try to cover the cost, and I come back every couple of years with changes in the in the cost structure. So I don't believe we really legally can go charging people extra money to do it. It's a great idea, but that that, that won't work too well. Yeah. Mr. Yeah, Tim, I had a question. I mean, we know this comp plan. We haven't had it updated since 92, and we know we have this legislative date that we have, I mean, from February. I mean, you know, so, so we haven't done anything on it or that we're in a crunch now. I guess I'm still a little perplexed at why we haven't, you know, we, we should have been moved further. Well, I don't have, I really haven't had the staffing along here to do that, and we've had other things that come up. So, I mean, I, I you know, I'm not trying to be defensive about it. I'm just telling you, um, and I, I really, you know, I have to look at the people I have on, you're looking at the person who's probably the primary writer, okay, the author. I have, you know, I've got at least two staff members, another staff member who can do a lot of the writing. I have a, a more of a junior person who she can ha uh, help a lot. So we have some limitations there, but we have all this other stuff that comes along that we have to handle. Would and the last uh, three years of the da economic downturn, I'm mean, just saying, you know, we've well, been a little more proactive we, getting this done. Well, I know. We've been, now we don't have people. Well, I keep getting, you know, we want to do this, you want to change the code here, and we've done a lot of that. So I, I you know, it... Uh, it's one of those things, and to, to do the thing, you really need to be put some more effort onto it. And what happens is you're working on something, you get phone calls, you're involved talking. So it isn't like the offices were quiet during this time. We still had a lot, but, you know, um, and we were getting staff reductions during that time. So they were hitting us at the same time. What would so. it look like if we had someone not full-time, just part-time, that came in and this was their only responsibility it would be very helpful to do that if I had somebody who, but again, it's money, it, and you wouldn't have to, have, and you would you'd have to have somebody who's got some real experience doing that. The, That's the last what, time you did this. You, last time you did this, the, you had six people, and you got an outside consultant to do it. You, I wasn't here. This is back. Oh, okay. I might be old, but I'm not. I wasn't here for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And they both cities did have outside yes. consultants, and I believe when they had their meetings here, they had a third party that actually conducted. A lot yeah, of those. So, so uh, maybe we're really forced into getting an outside consultant to be doing this. I mean, if you if you before had six and now we're down to three and and you know just. Have you ever read a comprehensive plan? I looked. At, I looked at it. Okay. Yeah. I suggest that you really look at it and think yeah. that you're going to have somebody from outside your community coming here and doing a, a plate for your your city oh. and its future. I mean, I don't see, yeah, from that standpoint, I, I agree. getting an outside uh, consultant to come in. That was, I just have one question. Tim, are we under the gun to do something with well, this? Well, no, if, uh, the, when I say under the gun, we're theoretically, not theoretically, under, under the state law, if we don't get our thing approved by the state by de February 8th or something next year, we just can't do comp plan amendments. And what the impact, that's the, the only thing, but that is important because that means people that need a comp plan or a future land use change or something like that, or we have an annexation, we won't be able to really handle that. So um, we had that happen to us before when I first got here. We were out of compliance, uh, and that held us up for about two or three years to get us into compliance with the state law. But they've watered the state law down, but this is still... This is, well, uh, there are, there's, I, I, Randy, I think it's as simple as at the end telling the city manager and Mr. McGarry what we want to accomplish, and they'll have to figure it out. Yeah, I, and, and personally, I don't think bringing a consultant on, okay. I think the, the comments made by uh, uh, Pilar on that, it's hard. I would rather have somebody that I work with, I give them certain tasks to do, and we're still running the show. 
then I just it's assume a lot from easier. that we did it before. I've we never could do been happy. Yeah. You know, uh, it's funny. I, I've, I'm never happy with consultants. A lot of times, I think I can do a better job. And when you're rewriting their work because they don't know, I've had too many experiences of that, and I don't want to waste money, which is very precious. Amelia, the yeah. part time there is no such thing as part time anymore. The way the federal wage and hour law is, anything over, and I think it's 20 hours that we do have to pay benefits. So we that's. Real quick, so the question is, is does, does the existing comp plan, would it pass if we sent it up to the state so that we don't get penalized? No. Okay. No, the existing comp plan wouldn't even meet certain uh, requirements. Is there a uh, minimum yeah. amount of work that we can do so we don't well, get penalized Well, I mean, I think that's what we look at. What is the minimal what we want to do? I'm not trying to – what we're looking at is scaling down, dividing it into a technical and policy document, which it isn't now and work on those significant, try to do those significant elements that we think are important. So we're going to, we're so not going to do action t taken on this. I mean, I would suggest one of the council members, let's just put it on the agenda. Um, all right, Tim, I know you no, probably okay. don't want to do that, but, you <laughs> but know, the last thing I want to do is end up not with a comp plan and then get penalized by the state. Well, you're not going to, you won't get penalized. My, my guess. Well, you won't get the graces. I think the important thing is here, I'm not worried about the state. I'm more worried about what we're delivering to our citizens. I agree. You all Agreed. as a policy yes. board. Yeah. That's, the state has pretty well watered these, these things down so they don't mean as much from the state standpoint, but from a local standpoint, you know, I, that's my background, that's my education right. and experience. That's the important thing. What it means to the community and can be used by you all. And right, but the, the planning is the heart of our city and where we're going. That's and good. I want to make sure that we're giving enough emphasis and priority to you and making sure that you can do what you need and want to do. And I think that's kind of what we're hearing is that yes. those resources. I, I, I think we're under the gun to do something about our planning process and I and, and not necessarily uh, the state stuff. I, I think that I think it's time that we, we these things got all linked together and you got the help you need to get it done. Yeah. So I think the manager and I can discuss how to do that and uh, not, you're kind of hitting me with this so I'm, <laughs> you know I'm, <laughs> somebody, well, we want to make sure you help you Mrs. Day, I know you do, do have <laughs> I'm Deborah Dague 1846 21st Avenue um, I was a member of the vision implementation team and the whole idea behind the vision plan after it was adopted was that each section would be looked at and that's pretty much what the culture arts council has done each each area was going to be referenced. Original Town and Osceola Park has, has plans. Uh, Original Town is moving forward with more of that. But that was the idea. Once that was adopted, then each section or element would be looked at. And the Beachside Master Plan was actually the first thing that the city worked on. One of the things that hasn't been looked at is the downtown, and that's true. They seem to be on the back burner. They've uh, had documents that are on file with the city hall. They've you know, had ideas. So they actually are the next group, as, as far as I can see, that actually need to be referenced. So, but within that vision plan, there were sections. There were, and the idea was to get them into the comp plan as we were working on them. So the city's been working on that. It hasn't really been um, evident to a lot of people, but uh, we have had a lot of meetings based on visioning and such. It's just been different sections, different elements. So However you guys can move this forward as far as within the comp plan and uh, making sure that the, the stakeholders and the various groups that have these concerns are um, met with. I mean, we're on a good path. It's just the idea of making sure we're placing the right emphasis and actually getting something done. All right. Are we ready to move on to the next one? Or? Just one other topic uh, while we're talking about downtown, the Highway 60 project. Some of those decisions may be coming to the city council here in the near future. The uh, State Department of Transportation is now doing a survey of that area and may want us to emphasize that our plan that we put forward is something we want to have them project into any future reconstruction. Well, isn't it 2018 they were talking about resurfacing the twin pairs? I think it may or even later. be out later than that. But, later. but now they're doing their survey, and what they do is they put this into their master planning and I think in our particular case we had some striping we wanted as well as some uh, actual curb changes that we wanted 
and <clears throat> those costs needed to be projected in there, and then they would tell us what portion of that is ours. So you're looking for a consensus. Do we stand by our vote or not? Well, a actually, it'll be we'll have to redesign that. I think Tim and Monty will be bringing that back to you. Right. Uh, we're going to uh, – Monty is kind of leading this, but we need to submit our application for the lane reduction, and this will be all part of it. So that will be coming back before you all. Probably in the next month or so. All right. Tim, I want to thank you. I know your office gets everything thrown at it, and I appreciate your. I really appreciate what you've done. I've attended the charrettes you've done, like the community church and stuff, and I really do appreciate it. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I Indeed. wish we could do more for you. Well, all. we're going to try and see if we can. Yeah. We're going to see we're if we can to help you out there. Yes. <laughs> You'll give me a chance. Yeah, uh, we're going to try and help you out there. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you very much. All right, then let's move on to the G, Mr. Ole, you cheers. Um, I, I think we've gotten a long way toward what I'm, I've been talking about. But what, what I'm also interested in is, is financially looking out 10 years or 15 years and just seeing what things we can actually accomplish and what things we, we have to sort of adjust or move around or whatever uh, because we have a lot of things that come at us on a current basis. I mean, I... Um, you know, we're talking about maybe mothballing the the, uh, the power plant. We're talking about um, setting up a um, uh, trust fund for the OPED. We're talking about several different things that that impact us financially. And laying these things out into a longer range plan than a, just a year by year plan, um, I think makes an awful lot of sense. So you can sort of figure out what you can do and what you can't do. Um, and some of the plans or the or the wishes we we would like to do um, would fall away, or would we'd have to pare them down so we could actually get them done. And I'm so I'm interested in in uh, throwing into the pot all the things we know we need to do, and some of those things we'd like to do, and just see how how we could uh, work them out by doing something like a 15 year or a 10 year plan. And uh, that's really what I'm interested in. Um, I, I, I'm not say, suggesting that we vote and accept a 15-year plan. What I'm suggesting is that we, we try to look at what we can possibly do and implement that on an annual basis when we do the budget process, but that we look ahead always because there's so many things that, that are routine that we, 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 we got into this de debate about the, the roads and what needed to be done with the roads annually. We were budgeting for 200000 and it needed more like 400000 or 600000 annually. Well, I think part of it is just sort of saying, okay, we know the roads have to be done for X amount. We know that buildings have to be fixed, roofs have to be fixed, all those kinds of things. Let's put those in our budget to, to, to maintain the city as we'd like to, and then add in the things that we would like to be able to do or know that are coming up or, or the, the wannabes and try to figure out whether we can finance them or whether we can't finance them or how what we have to do in order to get them done or how we have to schedule them. And I, I think the long-range planning process is something that we've really got to go through. You're talking financial. Yes, I am talking financial. But you have to start with, you have to start with a wish list, you know, yeah. and you have to start with uh, <clears throat> some consensus of what kinds of things you want to look at, what yeah. types of projects. And then come up with an estimated cost. For yes, each indeed. Of those yeah, items. indeed. And then a timeline of how long, you know, under best of circumstances it would take. Then you can fold that into the financial. But I mean, right. you've got a lot of steps to I, get. I, I understand. I, but we have to start. Right. Yeah. Well, we, we really do do that. We've got our capital budgeting, and we do have our items listed, and then we do list when the when the projects start, where they're going to get financed, and and how they're going to get financed. There's just, there's, it's the not a budget; is really a maintenance budget. Maintenance. Well, we but I mean, we, we can put things on that. Like yeah, for that an example, the roads. That is, that is correct. Know. But when you do that now, even under the five-year plan, and and Randy going back on a 15-year vision, I think is very good. But you got to remember, we adjust our five-year plan every year. And we do not identify, in some cases, our revenue streams as we go out. But when we put it in our five-year plan now, since Cindy and I have been here, we've attached where the money's coming from to do that. What that has done, in essence, has eliminated a lot of projects. Yeah. And so if we do a five-year plan and you say you want something, you need to identify where the revenues are going to come from in order to do that. And, and I agree with you all. You need to set your priorities of what projects you want. We can pro 
plug those in and tell you. But one of the real concerns that I have, because I've been involved in this in, in the future in my past life, you don't want to put a project in there and say it's going to be based on grants. All right, that's that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the yeah. easy way of getting something in there. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah. but I think what we're doing is we're showing how much we can, for example, the roads, how much we can spend Correct. versus what we actually should be spending or what need to be spending to get it done in five years, 10 years, 15 years. So like you're saying, we're doing maintenance, but are we really looking out and saying, okay, look how much our tourism is increasing. Look at the traffic on some of these roads now. Does that mean that we should be looking at replacing more sooner? Because these roads are getting a lot more wear and tear. So things, I think, having a that kind of saying, okay, well, we should be spending this much in order to do this. And I agree with you. And, and, and the key is, is that when you all set those priorities of projects, you tell me what projects you want to do in year 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18, we will put those into the thing, and then I will tell you my best estimate of where revenues will come from in order to meet that expectation. Right. And, so, and obviously, some of the things that on the wish list, um, uh, and I'm, I'm just picking one, for the, moving the, the water sewer plant, maybe it's something we just can't do now. You know, Maybe it's just something we can't do to, at, when it possibly comes up. In your five-year capital plan should not be a wish list. Yeah. It should be your projects, and you have committed to funding those projects in the fiscal years. Anything beyond that could become a wish list, and you, you sort of put them in where you put your priorities. But that's one of the problems that we've had is that our five-year plan has become a wish list, and it adjusts every year, and we need, we, we need to adapt to the fact is – that we're going to actually accomplish what we have in there. I think that's really more what I'm suggesting is that we try to do a doable plan um, for the for the five year or ten year period. We try to do a doable plan, and we bounce those things off whether we can actually finance them or not, or we can actually pay for them or not. Um, and there are some things that require more planning. You know, this aviation boulevard issue, widening aviation boulevard, and, and that with the twin pairs and redoing the twin pairs, that needs some prior planning and some prior negotiations and, and coordination and stuff. And if we lay those things out, we, we know when we're going to get up against the, the, the time crunch. And uh, that's more what I'm interested in, just to make sure that we're, we're trying to plan ahead so we know what, what we have to do when and we know what, where the money has to come for, what we have to do about money. Randy, would you like, uh, well, first of all, someone supporting Jim, you know, one of the, the problems with city government or government in general, whether it's Washington or Tallahassee, it's Change here today, over. gone tomorrow, it's short term. I mean, that's the way government is. Uh, that reflects several things. It reflects politics, but it also reflects that our terms are only two years. I mean, what happens, you know, four years from now? It, maybe some of us will we're still all be gone. here. Yeah, we're all gone. Yeah. I plan to be here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> with, with that, with 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 that said, it would. I think your five years or ten years is clearly beyond anything that we can accomplish with what. The, the realities of that I just stated, I, I don't know, it, it might make sense to try to do an operating budget provisional one for two years or three years as a start and, and start some useful place, because I don't think we can do five years. I, 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 I disagree know. completely. I, I, the, and the reason is that many of the things that we're talking about are almost non-political. I mean, uh, the, the, certainly the roads, um, uh, certainly the, the vision plan, hooking in the vision plan, hooking in some of the plans we're all talking about, most of those are non-political. Um, there are some things that are going to be, I, I don't want, but you want kind of things. Um, but I think an awful lot of them, maybe 80%, are probably not political. When you and put a price on them, they yeah. become political. Okay, and maybe so, but, but, they, but you can, at least you would have them set down and at least you have one version of what to do and then you can move them around a little bit or say delay it a little bit but um but getting a, a long-range plan i think is critical no but isn't it inherent in any manager of any department to be doing planning you know yeah. but, i mean you know for the at the uh at the water treatment that rob bolton's looking at okay you know we get our debt paid here and you know we may have that opportunity there's land at the airport you know he's he's have to give us some vision 
Obviously, he can't start a project without bringing it to council to get the funding. But I mean, that's part of his job. At the electrical, it's part of their job, too, to be looking at the future and planning for it and then bringing those forward. I mean, I'd, 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 I'd completely agree. Has, every department yeah. has a yeah. plan. I, I mean, Monty can tell you exactly how many roads, but the problem is, again, going back, when we do our five-year capital plan, the limitations that I place on the department directors is your revenues are going to remain neutral. Yeah. So, so it, but it's the coordination of all the departments that coming together so it's one big budget for the, the for the city is the issue. And and yeah, and so people can each department can plan as well as they possibly can, but it won't work later on with, in terms of funding. So what I'm suggesting is that we look further for the whole city um, and uh, and be able to coordinate it that way. Yeah, let, let, suggesting that they bring forward their plan, you know, their Blue sky plans. And I mean, I know Rob Slesek, for example, I mean, for years he, he knows that there's things that needed to be done at Leisure Square at some of the other facilities. And we just said, hey, they haven't been many, you know? But if we'd say, hey, you know, lay, lay, out, lay out your wish list for each department. Yes. Yeah, I, that's something you could do. Yeah, and we indeed. Do yeah, I mean. indeed. Well, you know, what, what happened this year, uh, the roads were $600,000, and I think we spent two hundred. What happens is, unfortunately, the process we have right now, we kick the can down the road. Yeah. And that's true of Leisure Square. It's true of uh, the buildings, the, you know, the awning at uh, uh, it's either Beach House or Riverside House. We just kick the can down the road. I, I'd like to almost see us do, when we do this year's budget, do a provisional budget. You do, do a real budget for one year and try to do a second year as a starting spot or a second and third year. Because I think what happens is, Every year that I've been here, we've kicked some cans down the road. We don't have the money, so Leisure Square is in disrepair. Mr. Mayor, we have a very difficult time putting one budget together. I know. I, I, and, and That's why I said two. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I'm, not, I'm not sure a provisional budget because, again, we have to tackle what is in front of you in that time. The capital improvements plan is really where – you're doing your future planning of projects you want us to take on the rest of it but there is another element in all of this that we need to take under consideration we have human resources and it is a resource that's very valuable to us and in six years we've had three percent pay increase plus deductions of benefits somewhere we're going to have to program that in as another cost item as we go forward and next year is going to be one of those because you're going to have police and Teamsters, both of their wage openers are going to be next year that we'll be talking about. And if we want to accomplish things, we've got to have capable people in place to do it. So in our mix of expending money, when you come up and say we would like to have this elaborate boat dock down on the lagoon, and I'm not saying anybody has that, but it, it, using that as a concept, and it's going to cost us $2 million, I would rather spend... Two hundred thousand dollars on pay increases to let you know, just to put in priority. Well, I, I I think that's that's a that's a very good point, and and I think the the staff has taken the brunt of the cuts over the last number of years uh, when it went from I think it was five forty three down to what it is now three ninety five or something like that, and um, and then the the changing over from the, the benefit plans has been difficult also, and we're down to a really good team of people, but they're, they're but we've got to we've got to say that we love you still, um, and uh, that's got to be in part of this. Uh, a very good team you've got. Well, and I do have a very good team. Love is, <laughs> but I want to make sure that they're compensated. Yes, it? indeed. And I agree. But back to Randy's point and the mayor's point, we have this five-year capital improvements plan. And sometimes I'd like to see if we keep doing this maintenance, if we had just been putting some of that money away in 10 years, couldn't we have replaced a facility? Because some of these things, how many times can we Band-Aid them and how much money are we expending Band-Aiding them when we should be looking at replacing them. Leisure Square is a good exactly. example. That's exactly yeah. what I'm thinking. Let's use the roads again. I mean, Monty presented what he saw as his vision for street resurfacing next year, or this year, and we reduced that number. We'll be very happy to come in and have the departments. Pilar, you're right. Uh, my department directors mm -hmm. are, are very good at having projections of what's needed in their department. Rob Bolton, as an example, he took on the STEP program as a, a very good pro You guys afforded him the money to be able to do that. And so we have the creativity to do it. 
And it also boils down not only to those functions that people will see where we're digging up the streets in front of their house, but that also comes down to finance and using those support services. I mean, human resources were down to three people, and that includes our risk manager. So you, you, the departments can tell you where they think they need to be, and we have absolutely no problem putting that together and projecting that out in a, in a future CIP as well as a future as a, a budget going into the next year. You just got to tell us what limitations you want to place on it. If there are no limitations, we'll bring back what we think is necessary. You, you know there'll be limitations, Jim. Yeah. I mean, that's right. You, know, oh, you, bring, you bring back th that to council and say, okay, yeah, you've got a 30 percent increase for all for all your wish list. Are you willing to increase taxes 30 percent? I mean, that's yeah. yeah. But it, I think it would be good to know that. You know, for planning and budgeting, if we're going to replace a facility, instead of putting money, you know, at this and at that, instead it gets put away for the replacement in five years or six years or seven years. So that way, you know, we're not spending money on something that we're going to... Funding depreciation is exactly. what you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. So I think But if we that can't fund what we need to purchase going into next year, how are you going to fund depreciation? Yeah. There, there's, Anywhere there's, you want to go. There's, there's no guarantee that you can... Uh, dictate what your future politicians are going to do. The politicians are terrible at saving money. They really right, are. Right, but I think that the, I, and I agree, but I think it's a cynical view because I think if you show the community that these things are important and need to happen for their use, they can push that pressure and put people in office who share that view or support that. But I think if you're not putting something out for people to see and understand, then they don't, they don't know who they want or what they want. You know, I think it just it, it requires some creativity. I mean, it, you know, the, the step system was was a good example. We got something done that was a huge, huge thing, and we didn't we didn't have to spend a whole lot of money on it. Um, you know, I think I think if we're looking at Leisure Square, um, I think we can get creative with it, and I think we can replace it. Uh, but we got to put a little effort as to kind of looking under the rocks and seeing what's what's available. There's a lot of grants. There's a lot of uh, uh, people that want to see that rebuilt. Uh, we just probably got to get creative with it. Instead of funding depreciation recommendation, let's fund debt service so you get the job done, and then you're forced to fund the debt service. Depreciation becomes one of those optional every year, and I agree with Jay here. You, no offense to you elect folks, but somebody sees some free money somewhere, we have a tendency to find another project. Future so, politicians respond to debt Jim, much Jim, more what would you think savings. about bringing forward in the budget uh, a program to take the main building of Leisure Square and replace it? I mean, needs we, to, we can do that, and we needs can get to be cost done. estimates on that. I mean, it's it's and shot, it, and and it's not going to be one of those projects that we can go out fundraise. You know, oh, I mean, we'd borrow the money to do it. I, we, we absolutely we can do that. I don't I don't know whether others agree with me, but I think it's shot. It's, it's well, if what you're looking for are for department directors to bring projects to you for consideration, and it may yeah, not be uh, the limitations as you say. We may not go up in revenues by thirty percent. It may be ten percent. And then instead of doing that in year one, you do it in year two. But we program that project and say this is where the money's coming yeah, from. Yeah, then we can start stretching it out. When I, I, I um, went to this um, course work for new city council members, and and one of the one of the uh, half days was finance. Um, and we and and I asked about long range planning who did who did what and and did most cities do it and and uh, the person that was running it said uh, every city um, should do a ten or fifteen year plan and most cities do and so I, I and I and all businesses you know go out at least five years or or at least look way ahead as to what they're doing and I think that it would be wise for us to do it not that it goes into a budget but that it that it's you look out and just see what what's going to hit you and what you've got to do anyway and then some of your wish list and then see if you can figure out a way to do it to uh, to finance it come up with some other ideas or something like that and that's kind of where I'm where I feel it's important. Well, we, we will start, the departments will start putting together their wish list and what they would like to accomplish. I'm still going to use the five-year format, if that's all right. Yeah, and yeah. then anything beyond that, we'll let your all's creativity sort of work in that direction. So, But we will tell you where we need to fill in gaps of projects as well as people in order to accomplish the projects. Okay. Sounds good.
All right. Is there further comment from the public on the uh, long-range planning? Yes, Mr. Day, come forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good morning, Council. Ken Dagg, 1846 21st Avenue. I, I had a question first uh, on the comp plan and vision. Are you going to incorporate the vision plan into the comp plan? Is that is that our understanding? So that's going to be done moving forward? Yes. Okay. Uh, as far as the uh, short range planning and long range planning, I certainly agree with Mr. Old and uh, Mr. Uh, Richard Winger on this. I think we do need a plan in place. And if you can show the community some short-term projects, uh, your department heads certainly know the needs of the community. They're out in the community every day. They hear from the community every day. And when they bring forward projects, they, they know what needs to be done. And even if you have to move out and uh, look for revenue, revenue elsewhere, you talked about Leisure Square. I know all of you, to my knowledge, have been to Leisure Square. You know, that needs a lot of help. Uh, and the community would certainly appreciate it if you could start doing a few things there. And Leisure Square, as you all know, is utilized by a lot of people. You know, it's part of this community. And I think going forward with the city, you know, the city has been here for a long time. It's going to be here for, you know, for future generations to use. And I think uh, we do need to do things to make it, you know, to keep it operating is what people are looking for. There are things that need help out there, and I think you all got the gist of it. People are wondering, okay, are you going to start taking care of things? I also want to say thank you very much for meeting like this and hearing from the public. There's quite a few people here today, and then that's a good thing. And I'm hoping in the future uh, you can schedule some more meetings. And one other quick question. Um, when the vision plan will be incorporated into the comp plan. Does that include our neighborhood plans? We have two neighborhood plans. Is that, yes, Mr. Manager? It's my understanding the neighborhood plans are part of the vision plan, so they'll be also in the comprehensive okay. plan. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further public comment before we move to the start, A? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess we'll move to A. And then, and uh, consideration of the best use of the city waterfront for recreation over the next five years. You know, uh, I don't know on, on uh, council who's seen the drawing of the uh, the uh, the fishing pier to uh, comm uh, commemorate coal, and I think it's a good project. And I, I think we have at the last city council we had we had general consensus that it was a good project, and you know the map shows where it is, and it looks like it makes sense. But, you know, we own uh, the waterfront from, uh, from the marina down through Riverside. And actually, uh, on the other side of the river, we own the waterfront uh, behind the two utility plants. And what I had in mind here really wasn't so much that, that, uh, that we would today decide anything particularly new. I, I think we've had two organizations that... Uh, that the city manager and Rob Bolton and have, have really facilitated uh, in the youth sailing, which has been a tremendous success, and the rowing club. They row in front of my house. I know the rowing club would rather be on the other side of the river because I like a lot of wind, and my sailboat's on the wrong side of the river, and the rowing club's on the wrong side of the river. I live on the barrier island. What I really had in mind here is some longer-range visioning of what we do you know, with the waterfront. And I'll, I'll give you an example. And I'm rambling here, and pardon me for that. Uh, you know, we the land behind the uh, electrical plant, more could be done with that, it would seem to me, uh, even with it being mothballed. So the question is, how do we allow the public? And, and you know, the dog park, uh, give and take, has been a tremendous success. We have had, for a long time, long-term plans for a boardwalk along the river from the marina. Uh, the marina has been a tremendous success and is, is a, a tremendous positive. But how do we how do we uh, think about this into the future so that uh, we're committed to a course to use it for the public? That's I have. To, it's a question. Well, the two programs, uh, both rolling and and uh, uh, sailing, have been very successful, and uh, they deserve a place. Uh, they deserve some attention. I and I don't have a solution to it, but I think it's it's something we should certainly look at. Yeah. Just, just as a comment, when, and I'm using that term 
because I believe it will happen when we close and get out of the power generation business. <coughs> all those NERC requirements and some of those restrictions on access will go away, so we'll be able to free up some of that land, especially that that joins the, uh, the river itself. So hopefully we'll be able to accommodate if, if somebody using the dog park as an example or whoever it may be has an access and would like to use that, I think we will have a little more freedom. But the taking down of the plan itself, I think, is several years in the future because that's going to be a very, very expensive undertaking uh, to, to make that happen. So, so the mothballing of it, you say, will will relieve restrictions on that? So Correct. Right now we have Homeland Security issues with the access to the plant. Uh, and in the short term, at least, we will still have a substation there, so we'll still have limited access, but we can do that pretty well under a controlled environment. But right now we have like NERC controls because of our position as a power generator and that kind of stuff. Those type of regulations would go away. You know, one of the things that we had, I believe it was last year, we had a gentleman come forward and talk about a master plan for that area. Mm -hmm. Mr. Drain Bass. Right. And, uh, you know, I've been talking with Paul about a master plan, and one of the, the, the things that he keeps stressing about a master plan is that it allows all the organizations to come together to share in the visioning of it, and most importantly also in the financing if things need to be done. Um, you know, I've worked with, uh, with the rowing and uh, youth sailing people, and, you know, one of the good things that would nice, one of the things that nice to have happen is, is to have a little uh, sharing of expenses with, uh, you know, some of the, the governmental agencies like FIND. Um, I'm also uh, have been in, in touch with uh, some of the land trust people. Um, you know, we need to start thinking about what can be done back there and what, uh, what are the possibilities. And the more coordination that we get with a lot of our, uh, our groups around the area, the better chances we have for financing it. Uh, you know, the last conversations we had, we're struggling to find financing for some of our projects that we would like to do. This is land that we have an awful lot of interest with an awful lot of people that uh, would like to finance some of those those issues. So I, I would really like to see a master plan come forward so we can kind of get everybody on the same page and moving in the same direction as to what we want to see happen with this land. Yeah, that makes sense, but how do we do it? How do you organize that? And even when you have a plan, does anybody pay attention? I mean, we had a plan, a marina master plan, you know, and we've gone ahead and we've given several leases in those areas without any concern for the rowing or, or for the sailing. So we have a beautiful park, don't get me wrong, a beautiful park for our dogs on the, on the riverfront, and we have our children at the waste treatment plant, you know? I mean, that was my objection from the start. I mean, it was great. They have done beautiful. I'm not criticizing the dog. It's a wonderful facility. But it's just not a good use of, of that area, of that riverfront property. It could be shared. It could have been done something. You know, now you bring for planning. It's kind of like after, you know, the dog's gone you know, out, of, out, of, out of the box. And now you're trying to, you know. What, what I, well, I wouldn't disagree with you. I, what I'm suggesting is we should have had a master plan all along, is what I'm suggesting. The reason, the reason you have a master plan is you give these organizations a place to start. For an example, FIND will not come in and help you with permitting unless you've got a master plan in place. Um, you know, this is how you attract the money unless you want to pay for it yourself. This is how you attract the money. This is how you attract the organizations to come in and, and put the money into these, these places uh, to, to build your parks, to build your recreational facilities. And, you know, God willing, they'll help you with the cleanup of the, these sites and, uh, and help you with the permitting and costs. And well, that's something you, we need to do. You have the stakeholders who will be using it involved, so there's a greater impetus to see it happen. Well, you know, the question is, where do you start with it? I mean, you know, where do we? I don't know. The idea was the master plan where you could pull the organizations together and say, it's, it's, it's like the visioning process. Somewhere along the line, we've got to pull all the people together and say, hey, what do we want to see happen with this? Uh, I mean, we've already got youth sailing and, uh, and the rowing club involved in this, and they're, they're doing a wonderfully great job. Uh, but on the other hand, if we bring some other people together, we can bring some more funding for these, uh, these kind of projects. So how would we organize that? Would we... Well, how about we, uh, you know, bring it back to a council and we can bring uh, uh, Mr. Drittenboss back and, uh, and do the presentation again. 
and we'll see what we the uh, the council thinks of it. I'm I'm for that, or I don't know whether others are or not. He can give us some guidance on where to go and what what steps we would take. We can go from there. We can have a discussion. Because I think what 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 is important is that the stakeholders, namely the people that are that are the city, um, all have a voice in it. Mm -hmm. It's their property. So you'll do that. You'll okay. Sure. Uh, further comment from the floor, Mr. Day. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Ken Dague, 1846 21st Avenue. As you move forward with your planning on our waterfront, uh, we have very little left, and I would ask you uh, this. Um, public access uh, to the waterfront. Have it when you have your planning and you speak to your people that it's open to all. And I'll use a dog park for an example. You know, that's a, a great one to use for this example. That park is open to all. There are no charges. And they have been working very hard. They work very hard on raising funds. They work very hard with the city. Uh, city, city has put in some time uh, on the dog park, too. It's, you know, there's a partnership there. So please just bear it in mind. Let, these, let access be open to all where there's no charges. Your, some of your uh, private clubs you know, they're, they're nonprofits, they're great clubs, but you have to pay money to belong to the club, and sometimes they do have scholarships too. That's a good thing. Uh, but I would like you to see it keep it open to all, just like your dog park. That's a good template to take a look at for public access. Thanks. Thanks for your comments. Further public comment? Vic? Hey, good morning, Vic DiMattia, 29 Sail Fish Road, Vero Beach. Uh, I am the chairman of the facility committee for youth sailing. Uh, we, we don't, if you'd like to see a copy, I was counting on using the projector, but obviously it's not turned on yet. Uh, is, Could help? Can we? Yeah, okay. Uh, some time ago, you asked Rob Bolton to price moving the a wastewater treatment plant to the airport. Frankly, that scared the heck out of us. So we formed a committee and we now have a 25 year plan already in place. We already have permits to execute some of the key features of it and we are moving. So if you want a plan for out there, uh, we can show you what we have. Uh, the article I'll show you here shows how we take the entire frontage on the river, the canal behind that frontage, and area underneath the 17th Street Bridge. That becomes our facility. At one time in the future, when God willing we have significant funds to build a million dollar building out there, then we can afford to move out of the sheds that we're operating from that are uh, material to the uh, water treatment plant. Uh, are we on? A bit of an incompatible audio signal. Uh, if you can see on the right hand side, the sandy cross-hatched area is where we operate our sailing program. Uh, we now are working with uh, Florida Department of Transportation to lease area under the bridge. The bays are all designated for their use. The little area in the corner is a tiny parcel that brings their property out wide enough to have fenders underneath the bridge. So we're trying to lease, we have a lease application in there for four months in a day. They said they'd be ready in four months. Uh, haven't heard from them yet. Uh, so we hope to have that leased for 25 years, the area under the bridge leased for 25 years. And the canal, which is really the outflow ditch uh, from the power plant, 
was overgrown with mangroves. We got permitting from FDEP, and if you drive over the bridge now and look down there, you'll find uh, Pope River. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in the process of building dockage on the entire west hand, uh, western side. Uh, there'll be 304 feet of dockage in there when we get done. That will allow us to put all our chase boats there, our keel boats, uh, the sailing vessels will be stored in the bays underneath the 17th Street Bridge. We will add two more launch ramps along the waterfront. There's one there currently that we share with the rowing club. And that will give us really a facility to meet probably 200 sailors. Uh, we're at 60 now that we service routinely when you add two semesters <coughs> and our summer camp, we're over 200 now. We have over 200 student semesters now. Uh, we have 70 boats. Uh, we're, we're blessed in our growth and the ability to get funds to and, and labor to do that. Uh, we probably have 40, 50 volunteers come in every Tuesday and Thursday and work for four hours every morning. And we've got boats in all phases of construction down there. Everybody donates boats to us, and you can't believe what a donated boat looks like. So <laughs> we're, we're busy. But uh, we have the resources to develop this portion of it. We certainly could stand more as we get into a more formal organization and start moving up to our, our terminal size. But right now, we have a plan. We've got a plan for the facility. We've thought about how the city would use the remaining plan after the wastewater treatment plant exits. And we'd be happy to share that with you. Can you just make sure that Tammy gets a copy of that so we go? We all have it. Uh, you, you have it. Uh, Peggy Lyon has it. Okay. That's part of our, our, our long-term lease package, and that lease package won't be executed until Florida Department of Transportation's lease is executed. No sense doing the lease twice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> you know, uh, Jay, I think this... Of course, I'm a member of Youth Sailing, and I'm an instructor, but uh, sometimes instructor when I get there. But I, I think this fits into the master plan. How does this all fit together? To be sure that it all does fit together, I think it fits together, but who am I? You know, I think we all need to know, and the public needs to know that it fits together. Absolutely. So I think the next step is the one you said you'd bring forward. Mm -hmm. All right. Any further comment on the uh, on the waterfront? Yes. Uh, Chris Pope, 2305 46th Avenue. Um, I'm with the Youth Sailing Foundation as well. I just wanted to um, reply to a comment that was made earlier about giving the city land to clubs. Um, I want it to be very clear that Youth Sailing Foundation offers free sailing lessons to any child in Indian River County between the ages of 8 and 15, and there, is, there are no charges. I mean, we provide the place, the boats, the instructors, everything, and that's something we plan to continue. And uh, so we don't consider ourselves a club. We're a community organization. Thank you. Okay. With that, we'll move on to B, which is actually short-term rentals is the real topic since we've talked about code enforcement. You want to take a quick break? Yeah, we... that was a good idea. Let's see, it's uh, 10.58 right now. Why don't we uh, come back at 10 minutes after the hour? Sounds good. 11.10? Yeah.